Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about the individual who perhaps had the greatest effect on those early minstrel recordings. Um, his name was Len Spencer, and I wanted to talk about Len Spencer and some of the people that were around him in the early days of sound recording. His brother, Henry Spencer, sometimes went by Harry Spencer. It's kind of hard to tell what name he actually went by, but it went back and forth, Henry and, uh, and Harry. But he would do the announcements for the Columbia Records. That's what uh, Len Spencer's brother had a great career doing. Afterwards, he, he did all kinds of things, making uh, sound effects records and lectures. I'm sure he went into radio in its earliest days, too. Len Spencer would surround himself with an interesting gang of individuals, and through this gang and through his friends, um, many of these minstrel sessions took place. He recorded for Climax, which would become Columbia. Of course, he recorded greatly for Columbia. He recorded for the um, Consolidated Talking Machine Company he credited for, and which would later become Eldridge Johnson and then become Victor. Uh, he recorded for Berliner. He recorded for Edison. He did the Edison advertising record. He was on Zonophone. He was everywhere. And if you were looking for someone who made lots of records, it was indeed Len Spencer. He was a striking individual, had a scar on his face from a knife fight. He had a fantastic and fun personality. And, of course, uh, Henry, or Harry, and his brother, Len, were the sons of the creator of a very, very important style of writing called the Spensorian Method of Writing. His father was the creator of that. If you're familiar with the Spencer Method of Writing... It was a very ornate style of writing, and Len Spencer was very famous for being able to do some incredible pieces of, of art with just a straight pen. He was much more than just a singer, promoter. He was also a phenomenal artist. Now, he started making records back around 1892 and continued doing so until his death, uh, in 1914. Now, surrounding him on these records, on these records, I should say, were individuals like his brother, and of course, people like uh, Sam Rouse, who went under the name of S. H. Dudley. By the way, Rouse, or S. H. Dudley, whichever way you want to think of him, he's the fellow that wrote the Victor Book of the Opera kind of fascinating. So all of these people have other parts to their careers that we don't really hear about. Um, you had uh, William Hooley. Uh, you had Harry McDonough at times. Um, you had a whole mess of individuals. And as I said, all of them were doing other things. You know, the interesting thing about Harry McDonough his real name was John McDonald, and he was eventually an executive with the Victor Talking Machine Company. <laughs> so they're all they're all mixed in there. Now, in many of these early recordings, and uh, truly, uh, one of the more unique individuals is a fellow who you hear his laughter more than you hear his singing. Um, and that was George Washington Johnson. And George Washington Johnson was an ex-slave. Um, and he was the first African-American to make records. He had some spectacular hits. He only sang like four or five songs, actually. Perhaps his greatest number was the laughing song. But he was famous... Uh, for his uh, phenomenal and great um, sense of laughter and his whistling. And you'll hear him all the time. And so he stuck around with Len Spencer, of course, because uh, 
uh, Len Spencer would eventually open up a music hall and also a music publishing house. And the doorman for a while was uh, George Washington Johnson. So uh, Len looked after him. Now, Len Spencer, whose career was really, really going crazy uh, in the early parts of the 20th century, by the time we get up to about 1910, we start to see his career start to change. All of those old timers start to vanish. They, they lose their appeal. There's a new generation coming in. And so they all went their separate ways and started doing different things. As I said, Len Spencer opened up a, uh, a music hall, a music publishing house. And it's interesting, in the offices there, he would drop dead in uh, 1914. His funeral would take place at uh, Campbell's Funeral Home in on 66th Street in New York City, uh, a funeral home that would get very famous 12 years later because uh, that is where Rudolph Valentino's funeral would take place. But a very, very unique thing happened during the funeral and viewing of Len Spencer. Two Edison Cylinder records were brought in, brown wax, and Len Spencer read the 23rd Psalm in the Lord's Prayer and perhaps becomes the first individual in history to offer prayers or perform at his own funeral. Len Spencer was one of the titans of early recording. He's part of that whole Olympiad. And when you listen to his records, you're listening to a voice that's been stilled for over 100 years. And I will tell you this, 100 years from now, the voice of Len Spencer will be heard in many parts of the world long after we are dust. <laughs>